Bonnie and everyone. I'm here today to talk about the newest release by one of my favorite authors, Anishinaabeg artist Leanne Batasmisik Simpson. Uh, just released, I believe on September 2nd, Nupaming, The Cure for White Ladies. This was published by House of Anansi Press, who have always been so great to me, and they sent me this copy as a gift. So I'm very grateful, chi miigwech to them once again. Now, uh, Nupumang itself in Anishinaabe Moen means in the bush, and Leanne Simpson wrote this as a response to Susanna Moody's memoir that was written, um, I believe in 1850, 1852, yeah, a memoir titled Roughing It in the Bush, and Moody was an English-Canadian settler. I haven't read that yet, but I really want to, just to see what was going on in response to um, Simpson writing this in response to that. This wasn't a surprise to me that this is one of my new favorite books. I kind of knew that just from knowing that Simpson was releasing a new book. I feel like we kind of all have those authors um, where it seems like everything they write just connects with us and again that's what happened with me and Nupaming. So we start out with Mashkuaji, that's how the book opens up, and Mashkuaji they um, are lying on the ice and Mashkwaji and Anishinaabe Mawin means they're frozen, they have frostbite and it's Mashkwaji who introduces us to the seven characters who are going to be sharing their voices with us and so we have Sabe who is a sacred ancestor in Anishinaabe culture. Other cultures may know Sabe as Sasquatch or Bigfoot but in Anishinaabe culture they are our relation. Um, they teach us about humility and honesty, and they're very sacred. We also have Mindmoye, who is an old woman. That's what that means in Anishinaabe Moen. And we have Akawanzi, uh, which is old man. Um, there are two humans, Asin and Lucy. Asin in Anishinaabe Moen means like a stone or a rock. There's also um, Adik, who is, uh, that means caribou, and that's what they are. <laughs> they're caribou. Uh, Ninatek, um, that's a maple tree. So all of these beings, they are trying to navigate their lives as Anishinaabe in an urban settler world. And so what does that look like when they're separated from nature and they're trying to find as much nature as they can while living in an urban environment while also trying to really hold on to their Anishinaabe culture and in some of the characters' cases, trying to learn more from their culture as you know their elders are getting more and more elderly and they're kind of grasping at teachings because they know that their elders sadly won't be around forever. And I think for Indigenous readers reading that book, this book, I mean, um, for myself anyway, and I really do think other Indigenous readers will feel this way as well, there's a sense of knowing that fear and knowing that that's steeped in reality and that's kind of currently what's happening right now. And I think that that kind of touches on um, a fear that most of us do have deep within ourselves. Um, are we not learning our culture enough? Are we not absorbing enough from our elders? And I think in terms of the pandemic, that's kind of kicked into overdrive for myself anyway. It's often a story of longing and um, struggle, but then you also see that it does exist that we have access to our Anishinaabe ways of life, even in the settler's world, um, settler society, I should say, that we are able to connect to our culture, that our culture is always going to be there as long as we are there to receive it, you know, and that um, I think that this book also does a lot in terms of reconnecting to the traditional Anishinaabe views of gender, because Gender really is, in a lot of ways, a colonial construct, and I won't touch on this too much, but the fact that pretty much all the characters are they, them, um, kind of has roots, I'd say, in, in a lot of Indigenous ways of life and ways of understanding gender. And I also, something that I really connected with was that we're all relations, you know, um, because we have the humans, we have Sabe, we have Caribou, we have Ninatig, um, the maple tree, and then we also get perspectives from geese who are, <laughs> there's geese who these geese know, who um, like to be complacent and to stay 
in one spot instead of migrating and these geese are more traditional in the fact that they believe that migrating is important for one's way of life and one's strength and there's some elderly geese who really hold fast to this way of life that's kind of seen um, as more difficult by some of the geese I'd say <laughs> and so we get a lot of really great I don't know ways of thinking about um, Anishinaabeg ways of life and indigenous ways of life and we even get the views of raccoons um, living in the city and what they're adjusting to and how they're living and I think going into this and I say this about a lot of books that I read on my channel it's very very decolonized in the sense that it's not written like your typical western text so there's no long chapters generally they don't run longer than a couple pages sometimes it's just a paragraph sometimes it's one simple sentence um, on a page but even then it's not a simple sentence because for me every sentence in this carried so much meaning and so much importance and i think that there are a lot of readers who are more colonized in their thinking uh, more colonial in their thinking who are going to be really thrown off by this book and in fact there are some absolutely horrifying reviews on Goodreads but I won't get into those because that's not what I want to focus on um, but it kind of speaks to the fact that it's very important to read books like Nupaming with an open mind with realizing that if you're not Indigenous or more specifically if you're not Anishinaabe this book wasn't written for you um, it's still a gift to be able to read it and it should be kind of treated as such in in my opinion you know I think a lot of people who watch my videos know enough to treat books like this with that um, respect so I'm preaching to the choir I guess and I think that a lot of the times non-indigenous readers when they read books like this they focus a lot on the technical aspects of it um, how it was written the form just the way that the book is organized um, and that's fine that's totally fine and I think it is important and I do think that Patessima Sick Simpson is doing um, a lot of groundbreaking work when it comes to um, decolonizing the way that we look at writing but for myself and I touched on this in my Instagram review which I will link below for myself as much as the the way that the stories organized is important and it is groundbreaking when I read her writing it's deeper than that Simpson has a way of writing that makes Anishinaabe and I shouldn't speak so broadly and speak for all Anishinaabe that make me as an Anishinaabe Kwe feel like I'm coming home um, and so reading Nopaming was really comforting and it felt like I was finally stepping back into a space again where I'm completely recognized and that this book was written for people like me um, and that's such a great feeling. It's a powerful thing to write for your people in settler society um, and to do so honestly and with so much care and with such an honest and clear voice you know and Simpson really demonstrated that we are all relations we're all connected and this book will be unlike anything you've read. Even if you've read The Tax on Being Lost and Islands of Decolonial Love, this very much has a voice of its own and it's powerful and it's decolonial and it's amazing. And this is one of the most brilliant books I've read in a very long time. And I feel like a lot of people who are reviewing it are trying too hard to make sense of absolutely everything. And that's never been how I've approached um, reading any type of literature even as an Ojibwe person, I don't always have to know what's going on in Ojibwe texts. And I think the fact that um, settlers are trying to read Ojibwe texts this way, it's not gonna work out. Um, but anyway, this book is brilliant. I hope that you read it and I hope that you enjoy it. And I just can't praise it enough. And I am so, so grateful that I was given the opportunity to review it. Anyway. That's all I have to say. I hope I'm not forgetting to say anything. Let me think for a second. So takeaway, um, urban indigenous folks exist and we are always going to be trying to connect to our cultures. And as long as we do that, the colonizers will never win. Um, and anyway, this is just a great book. Please read it. Okay, miigwech, thanks for watching.